as we are just days away from game one of round one in the Eastern Conference Finals tipping off between your New York Knicks and the Philadelphia 76ers. Paul Reed gives the New York Knicks some more bulletin board material. Paul Reed on the Run It Back show uh, with Sham Sharania said, quote, we wanted the Knicks matchup. Of course, that's the easier team. Paul Reed, thank you. Thank you, brother. If there was any more ammunition, if there was any more fuel you needed to pour on the fire for the New York Knicks, it's the guy averaging seven points and six rebounds saying that we want the New York Knicks. So Paul Reed, shout out to DePaul and Paul Reed. We appreciate you. Your question might be this. Same one at the top of the screen. Who the hell is Paul Reed? He's had a great playoff career, guys. He's been absolutely phenomenal in the playoffs. Listen to this. In 26 career playoff games for Paul Reed, he's averaging 3.8 points per game, 4.4 re Wait, Jack Lottere, producer Jack, are these numbers right? These numbers are right is what he is telling me. So the guy calling out the Knicks, who is averaging 3.8 points per game in his career in the playoffs, is saying that's who we wanted? Crazy. I do get it, though, because when he plays the Knicks, he plays really well. In 10 games against the Knicks in his career, Paul Reed has been on fire, averaging 42 point, no, that's 4.2, 33, no, 3.3 rebounds. He's averaging half a block, though, so that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, Paul Reed, thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Paul Reed. We appreciate you. Because what you just did, I promise you, is being watched by Tom Thibodeau. It's being played in the Knicks locker room. Brunson, Hart, DiVincenzo, Hartenstein, and especially Mitchell Robinson have all seen that video and said, okay, okay, keep disrespecting the Knicks. The odds makers have the Knicks as the 13th best odds to win the NBA championship. The odds makers have the Knicks as the sixth best team in the Eastern Conference with the odds to win the NBA championship. Keep disrespecting them. Because you know what happened last time somebody disrespected the Knicks prior to playing them? They walked out on the stage and said, turn off the lights. Turn off the lights. Yeah, I'm talking about you, Jared Allen. Remember when you said you wanted to play the Knicks and what you had to say? And then what did you say after the series? The lights were brighter than expected. <laughs> the lights at MSG were brighter than expected. So, you thought, Paul, my favorite thing is the dude is a reserve. That would be like Alec Burks coming out and being like, yo, we wanted Philly. We wanted Philly. It's a joke. Who the hell is Paul Reed? My favorite graphic on today's show. Who the hell is Paul Reed? Oh, my God. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. We appreciate that. If you hate the Sixers like I do, give me an F Philly in the chat. Give me an F Philly in the chat if you hate the Philadelphia 76ers. I know I do. That team, they are scum. I do want to quickly look back at just the matchups that the Knicks did have over the Philadelphia 76ers, even though like I don't take stock in any of these four games. In any of these four games. Because only one time did Joel Embiid and OG and OB both play in the same game. But even in that game, which happened on January 5th, Julius Randle played. Yes, the Knicks dog walked him and beat him by 36 points, but Randle's not here anymore. And Philly's a different team. We're a different team. You beat him here, but OG and Embiid didn't play. You lost here. This game was crazy. 79-73, y'all remember that watch party? That was a brutal, brutal watch party. Uh, to go through. And then the last time, you beat him. 106-79, but Embiid did not play. OG played in this game, and OG played in this game, but in these three, OG and Embiid did not play. So um, take what you will from the season series. All I will say is it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. I think it'll go six games. I have the Knicks winning in six games. But Las Vegas and the odds makers and BetMGM, 
They once again have the Philadelphia 76ers as favorites. Knicks, the two seed, 50 wins, home court advantage, more rested, underdog to the Philadelphia 76ers. Keep pouring on more lighter fluid to the fire. Keep on keeping on because this team, good athletes and good, really just successful people in this world are able to draw motivation from anything. And I think there's a lot of motivation to be drawn from the past couple of things that have happened over the last couple of days. I'm putting a lot of money at plus 106, I'll tell you that much. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. We're going to be live for game one, going to be live for game two. We're going to be live for every single playoff game the Knicks play. Hopefully we get to see 16 wins because that's what we're going for. And we're actually in a subscriber battle with our Philadelphia 76ers channel here at Chat Sports. So let's beat them on the court. Let's beat them off the court. If you love the Knicks and you want free, informative, entertaining updates every day, subscribe to Knicks Now and turn your notifications on. Coming up next, OG Ananobi and Isaiah Hartenstein, they spoke on the matchup coming up against the Philadelphia 76ers. We have some awesome stats to get into from Big Nick Energy when it comes to OG and Isaiah Hartenstein guarding Joel and B. They did great work there. Um, check them out. We'll break that down around the corner. But first, I got to tell you guys about our proud sponsor, Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use that promo code CLNS. And Prize Picks, the number one daily fantasy sports app, will match your first deposit up to $100. It's daily fantasy sports made easy. All you do is create a lineup of two to six players, and you simply choose more or less on their projected stat line. And they already have plays out there for game one. I'm taking more than eight and a half rebounds for Isaiah Hartenstein. He said today to the Knicks media that he is ready and going to play more than 30 plus minutes per game. And when he does that, he's going to stuff the stat sheet. I also think Toby, Toby, Tobias Harris, will have less than 22 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. You can roll with my picks or fade my picks. I will say, to close the year, I had three out of four prize picks lineups cash for the last four Knicks games, which probably means the odds are not in my favor. Maybe you should fade me then, but do it at prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Promo code CLNS. Support the show. Support the sponsor. Be a real one. We would all greatly, greatly appreciate it. All righty. I still can't believe Paul Reed said what he said. Like, if you're Nick Nurse, you sit him down. It's like, dude, what are you doing? But whatever. That's old news at this point. I really like what Isaiah Hartenstein had to say. Uh, had to say. That's not even a, a phrase. Had to say about his matchup coming up with Joel Embiid and talked about how he and the rest of the Knicks defense needs to be disciplined. This is what I Hart said. Quote, Embiid, he's going to seek fouls. So that's the main thing. Through fouls, he'll get his little breaks. Easy free throws. So that's the main focus, is not letting him get to the line and get going from there. He's the MVP, so he's going to get some calls that maybe don't go in your favor. It's doing your job, playing team defense, and don't really put your hands in. It's smart for him. Why not use it? I'm not saying it's bad. He, If he's smart enough to do it and we keep doing it, we keep falling for it, That that is on us. And I want the Knicks, I'm hoping the Knicks, kind of learn from the series last year against the Miami Heat. In the first couple games against the Heat, hands were too many jump, too many fouls where the Knicks were jumping and they were baiting you into fouls. We know Bam does that. We know Jimmy Butler does that. But there's nobody better in the NBA doing that right now than Joel Embiid. So it's going to take discipline from Hartenstein and from Mitch. And if Precious has to guard him, if you get into foul trouble, Jericho Sims, they have to guard him. OG and Obi said he's expecting to guard Joel Embiid a little bit this series. So stay on the ground, stay vertical, and make him go through your chest. To be honest with you, Joel Embiid following this injury has been a face-up player. He's not working out on the block. So just don't buy the pump fakes. Stay down. Stay down. Trust your defense and just play with a high IQ. This comes from Big Nick Energy. Awesome, awesome. Twitter channel, uh, Twitter channel, Twitter account. They have a great YouTube channel as well. Check them out. They did some deep diving on some statistics, and here it is. In the last th last year, in three games, Joel Embiid went 9 of 13, shooting 69.2% against iHeart and drew four shooting fouls on him. Hardenstein didn't get a single block or cause a single turnover. Joel, 
scored 26 points. This year, in the one January game, a 128-92 blowout by the Knicks, and Bede scored 21 points on Hartenstein, but only shot 9 of 21. Hartenstein held him to 42.9% from the field, and he did draw two shooting fouls. Hartenstein also blocked him once and caused five turnovers in just the one game. Isaiah Hartenstein's got an opportunity to earn his bag. We've talked a lot on this channel how Hartenstein is going to get paid this offseason. If he plays really well and he is a big piece, which he will be if the Knicks win, I hate to say this, I think he might be out of our price range. Because if he goes out and he limits and makes it a struggle for Joel Embiid, which I think he will because I believe that's what type of player he is, may not be on this team next year. But you know what? I'll take that. I'll take that right now. And I'll also take what he did as a starter this year for the New York Knicks in 49 basketball games. 8.7 points per game, 9.4 rebounds, 3.4 a night coming on the offensive glass. He's also been an initiator of the offense for the Knicks. They almost use him like in that Joakim Noah type of role in the old Tibbs teams with the Bulls. The dribble handoff, that little push shot he's got from inside the lane has been money this year. Over averaging over 2.5 stocks per game. That's blocks and steals per game. We know what iHeart brings. And it's time for him to earn his cheddar. It's time for him to go out and get your bag. You go out and you play the way we all know and the way you know how to play. Philly's going to have a really, really tough time trying to get Joel Embiid going. How about Ananobi, though? Can Joel Embiid potentially be guarded by Ananobi from time to time. If I had to predict it, I think Ananobi will come out in this series, at least in the early parts of games, guarding a guy like Tyrese Maxey. We saw that in that matchup that closed the season where Embiid did not play and OG did. So maybe that changes with Embiid on the floor. Once again, my friends over at Big Nick Energy did a great job of finding up some stats on OG versus Embiid, saying OG has seen Embiid six times in the last two seasons. Five times as a Raptor and once as a Nick in January. Joel has scored 26 points across the six games on plays that can be assigned to OG as the primary defender. He shot 9 for 21, 42.9%, and 2 of 4 from 3. Joel has drawn four shooting fouls on Ananobi. He has three turnovers and was blocked also two times by OG. I honestly like having the flexibility that Tom Thibodeau has right now with the different type of bodies he can throw at Embiid. And I think OG is definitely a card and hopefully a card that Tom Thibodeau is going to play from time to time. I'm not saying 40 minutes of Ananobi on Embiid is, should be the play. I worry about foul trouble. And you got to really weigh that if you are Tom Thibodeau. But for stretches, I don't mind it. And I definitely want to see OG being that help defender on the double team with his six foot eight, seven foot five plus wingspan coming and just making life hell for Embiid. He likes, he's got a little Randall in him where he lets the double team come to inside his pockets before he makes that pass. And when that happens, you could really, really be disruptive. I also want to see Mitchell Robinson play and play the way he knows how to play and play the way that he does play. I don't know if we're ever going to get back to Mitch that was playing prior to the ankle injury this year. Not saying that won't ever happen. I believe that could be next year. I don't know if he's able to get back to the way he was playing prior to the injury, which in my opinion, he was one of the top five defenders in this league. His ability to play the passing lanes was such a jump this year. But at seven foot, 240 pounds and six fouls, I need Robinson to get in the mix. It's also going to take Tom Timber to adjust his defense. He doesn't like to extend his defense from centers really beyond the paint. He doesn't believe in that, but guarding Embiid, you're going to need to press up on that. So it's going to take a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets some pressure to Chua on him. So people have asked me, Marshall, do you think Sims or Chua would be the guy that would go out and guard and beat if Robinson and Hartenstein are injured, or excuse me, not injured, and in foul trouble. I think Chua would get the first crack at it. I went back and watched that game where Embiid did play against the Knicks in January, and Chua, I'm not saying he did a good job, but he guarded him a little bit, and pause, he can bang with him a little bit. We also got one more body, Jericho Sims. Got 24 fouls from four guys. That's not even including OG. Um, are the Knicks in a spot where, yeah, they're having to play the MVP? I believe he would have been the MVP this year if he didn't get healthy. Yeah, but you know what? I got the Knicks, and I got confidence in them. 
I believe in this roster. I really, really do. Yeah, you're going to need Brunson to be sensational. You're going to need DiVincenzo, OG, and Hart to be great. But you really need Hart and Stein and Mitchell Robinson to play their A-plus games. I really, really, really do believe in that. Because you look now at the Philadelphia 76ers roster, Embiid averages 34.7 points per game. He is the engine to their team. They function through him. Everything is through Embiid. And they can make a life for him. I'm not saying you're going to stop him. I'm not going to say you're gonna say necessarily going to slow him down. Just make it hard for him. Make him make tough shots. Make him make difficult decisions. Make him perform at an MVP level to win this series. I got the Knicks in six. Who do you got? Who do you got? Light up the comment section. Type NYK for the Knicks or PHI for the Philadelphia 76ers. Make sure you are following me over on social media at Marshall Green underscore on Twitter as well as at Marshall Green underscore on Instagram. Trying to grow my social media a little bit and I need help from the real ones. So get at me and let's go Knicks.